Hi guys, hope you're all doing well and welcome back to our series of Azure Active Directory. And in this video, we are going to talk about password protection and banned password. Now, if you're watching this series from the beginning, in the last video, we have discussed about password write back and how you should implement it for your on-prem environment. Whereas the agenda of this video will be knowing what is password protection, how exactly it works, what is a license requirement and how a weak or a banned password is calculated. Now, if we talk about what is password protection, the name itself signifies its meaning and that is the process of protecting password wherein we can make identities more secure is something called password protection. Now, this is something which is not new because we have been developing a lot of password policies with the help of Active Directory policies, wherein we are defining the length, complexities and age, or let's say the number of password that has to be remembered. But there are certain common patterns which are used by user, which can be any keyword or the company name itself, or any product or any department name. So in a nutshell, if we can define a process wherein all these common patterns will be blocked either the user is trying to reset the password or the admin is trying to reset the password for a particular user instead of providing them a generic password the password should be strong enough so that the identity should not be compromised is what we called password protection now let's understand this from a real-time scenario wherein there is a user who works for Contoso corporation and he's trying to reset the password if we talk about the common patterns which can be used by user in a generic scenario, it can be Contoso at 123 or Contoso user or the keyword welcome or password with some special characters or password and then at 123 or exclamation at 123. These are the common patterns which can be used by user. Now, recently there are lot being changes which is happening wherein the admins are now not providing the generic password but a couple of years back there was a scenario wherein admin were also providing generic password which a user has to reset and then they can gain access to their accounts so in a nutshell if we talk about this list which is more of a relative to Contoso corporation which we have to block so that the user can not reset the password with these common keywords is called password protection. From a definition perspective, eliminating the use of common patterns or keywords to be used as password is called password protection. And this list of keywords which you will block is called banned password list. Now let's talk how exactly banned password works. So Microsoft invests a lot in analyzing the security telemetry of Azure Active Directory wherein it monitors what are the compromised passwords or what are the very commonly used or weak passwords which are available so that it can maintain its own global banned password list. Now, this is something which is available with all the tenants and that's the reason when any user or admin or we as a user, we go to aka.ms forward slash SSPR and if we try to use very generic or a weak password, we get a prompt that this password is weak, try something new or it does not comply the password policies of your enterprise, choose a different password. So in a nutshell, there is a banned list which has already been maintained by Microsoft. But apart from this global banned password list, which is available to all the tenants, what you can do as an admin, you can define your own custom banned password list, wherein you can add the keywords which are moreover related to your enterprise. So if we talk about Contoso Corporation, I can add Contoso as a keyword in my custom band password list and couple of product names which are very common or which are very popular, which can be used by user as, as their password intentionally or in, unintentionally. So that all these common patterns or weak or bad password should be banned in my enterprise. So for this scenario, if I have already added 
Contoso as a keyword in my custom band password list, then the user will not be able to reset the password which are listed on the screen, which is Contoso at 123 or Contoso user or the keyword password or let's say password exclamation 123. So these are the passwords which the user will not be able to reset because it's already available in my custom bound password list. Now, since this is a premium feature offered by Azure Active Directory, it requires Azure AD Premium P1 or P2 to be assigned to a particular user. Now, this feature is available with cloud identities as well as synced identities. And it's not only limited to SSPR portal, it is also available for your on-prem environment. That means that the users who are trying to reset the password from their on-prem machines, they'll also get the same policies. And for that, there is a setup that you have to do, which I will be covering later. Now let's talk about how banned password works in a nutshell or how a bad password or banned password is calculated. For that, let's imagine a scenario wherein a user is trying to reset the password from SSPR portal itself and he or she is trying to use the keyword password itself with some special characters. And I have added the password keyword in my custom banned password list but the fact is that before the password reset request is completed for this user, the password which has been entered by the user and the keyword which is available in my custom band password list that has to be matched. Now there is a process which does this for us and that's what we called normalization. Now I'll tell you how that normalization process works. The very first step is to convert the entire keyword which is entered by user into a lowercase string and replace all the special characters with the relative alphabets. So once the normalization process will be applied to the keyword that's been entered by the user, which is this, it will look something like this. And just for your reference, this is a small table which is also available in the Microsoft article, which I will be sharing in the description. You can review that. This is what happens when the normalization process goes through, wherein one gets converted into L, dollar gets converted into S, and other it gets converted into A. So now if we compare this table with the initial request which was initiated by user, the keyword password which the user has entered with special characters and O replacing with zero will get converted something to like this. And since this is blocked in our custom band password list, the user will not be able to reset the password. The next process that happens is called substring calculation, wherein a checksum is applied to user's name as well as tenant name. So for that, let's consider a scenario wherein a user named as Rob who works for Concepts Work and he's trying to reset the password by using his name or the tenant name itself. And let's say he's trying to choose any of these two passwords. Now, since there is a substring calculation which is happening under the hood, these two requests will also be blocked because these are the common names or terms which are moreover related to the user itself or to the company itself. The third process that happens is what we called fuzzy matching behavior. For that, you can understand this from a scenario that let's say we have A, B, C, D, E, F as a banned password list and the user is trying to make change with one specific alphabet either by adding, removing, or updating then also the password reset request will not be completed because this is something which has been defined as fuzzy matching behavior wherein a user is trying to update just one alphabet that's it nothing more than that the last thing which happens for every password reset request is what we call score calculation and which contributes a lot for every password reset request and let's understand how it works. So for every password reset request, if your score is more than five, then the new passwords are accepted. Otherwise, the password reset request is denied and I'll explain you how exactly it works.
So now look at this custom band password list, which we have, which is Contoso, Password, Welcome, and New York. And let's say there is a user who is trying to reset the password, something like Welcome New York at the rate exclamation mark. And he has replaced L with one, uppercase C, O with zero, and then again, some customization on the word York. In this case, the first process that happens is normalization, wherein the entire password will be converted into lowercase and the special characters will be replaced with the relative alphabets. The next process will be of substring match. That will not get applied here because it doesn't contain the user's name or the company's name. Fuzzy match will also be not applied here because there is no change to only one alphabet in terms of addition, updation, or deletion. The next process which will happen is that every keyword will be treated as one single entity. Now, welcome will be treated as one entity because it's already available in my custom bad password list. New York will be again treated as one entity because it's already there. And then A will be treated as one separate entity apart from welcome and new york and the same applies to number one as well and in this case for every entity there is a score value of one so if we calculate this it's less than five which is four and in this case this password reset request will be blocked so even if the user is trying different combinations from the list of the band password the score has to be more than five then only the password reset request will be completed. So in a nutshell, for every password reset request that's been initiated by admin or by user, it goes through these four processes of normalization, substring match, fuzzy matching behavior, and score calculation. So this was all about knowing the theoretical part of password protection, how exactly band password works, what is the license requirement, how weak or banned passwords are calculated. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to implement password protection for your on-prem environment. If you guys have learned something new, please feel free to subscribe. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.